This is my game with Dennis Seawald, coincidentally from the same tournament, right? Also the same devil leg, Futurama. Okay, and I've shown the end of this game before, but 99% of you forgot or haven't seen it. And 100% of you haven't seen this game. You've only seen the end of it. And I have a funny story about this game. So I'm giving a lesson to a guy rated about 1970, uh, like a year after this game. And I showed him the end of the, I showed him the, the puzzle at the end. And he's looking at it. He looks for like five minutes. He says, wait a minute. I was watching this game with my friend and we thought you were lost and you played this move. And we were like, wow. And I was like, yeah. So he was actually watching it. That's how he knew the answer. Otherwise, he wasn't going to know the answer. So if you were in 1994 at the Motor City Open watching this game, you too may remember the end, but I doubt it. Okay, I'm playing Dennis Seawald. He's 2200. He's also from Soviet Russia. Okay, and we played a Sicilian. And this line, which I'm showing you right now, Bishop C4, Queen B6, this is actually in the Sicilian chessable course that I'm currently working on. I'm going to finish it this week. Then I'll make the videos over the next 10 days. Then they're going to make me do extra stuff I don't understand, which they always do. Then they'll publish it. So I'm guessing you can buy it between November 15th and November 20th is my guess. But I'm guessing. Okay, and, and this position is actually in my chessable course. Uh, notice I'm attacking the knight. Now, to explain the simplicity of my course, when I showed them the first chapter, which this is in, they said, I have to go into a long explanation about this because lower rated players won't understand why you're moving your queen in the opening. You have to tell them it's okay. You can't just gloss over it like I'm attacking the knight. They need, they need more. So I had to give a good explanation of why you'd move your queen in the opening. I don't know what the explanation is, but I had to give one. Okay, my opponent played knight de2. Typically, they play knight b3, and the point of queen b6 is their bishop on c4 can't go back to b3, which it often does in this opening. Still, knight b3 is the most common move. So he played knight de2. Now his bishop can't go back to b3. When they play knight e2, typically they want to play knight g3, knight h5. In this position, I was out of my prep. I didn't know the move knight de2. So I just played normal moves. e6. A6, bishop e7, you know, I developed my pieces. White's position doesn't look very threatening. Play bishop g5. He wants to play knight g3, knight h5, and put pressure here. I played knight e5. He can't play f4 and kick my knight. And if I try to play it, it'll just put it back. That's how bad it is. Can you believe that? Like, I can't, can't even do it because it's pinned. Okay, so he played knight g3 the point of knight e2. And I said, get your bishop out of there. Typically, in lots of chess positions, when a bishop is on g5 and somebody plays h6, the bishop goes back to h4. This is not one of those positions because the bishop is trapped on h4. So he played bishop takes f6. And I can take either way. The engine wants me to take with the bishop, but I was worried about knight h5. So I play G takes F, and I have a nice knight in the center. I have a lot of center pawns. I have the two bishops, and my king hasn't decided where to go yet, but I'm probably not going to go king side, although I could. Okay, he played A4, which I don't really understand, but neither does the engine. I played bishop D7. He played rook E1, and I decided I'm not going to castle king side, so I played rook G8. The engine says black is better here, by the way. Because this is a nice pawn structure. It takes all away all of his pieces from going to the center squares. And my bishop can go to c6. My knight's well placed. My rook's well placed, etc. Mainly etc. Now he played knight f1. And during the game, let me tell you what I was thinking. And it was 1994, but I still remember what I was thinking. I was thinking, this is an interesting move, confusing the audience. It's interesting in the fact that 
It doesn't really have a purpose, but the fact that I can legally do it is interesting. And the engine says black is better. Okay, the idea is if he takes it, I have knight f3 check, and then knight takes, and I'm on his bishop here. And his bishop can't move because I go here. On the other hand, I wasn't sure what queen d4 did. Although the engine says he should take it, which I think is wrong. It actually thinks that position where I have two bishops against two knights is equal. I don't agree with that. Okay. Anyway, I didn't play queen d4, but I did think about it. I played rook c8. I decided not to castle because my king is perfectly safe here. It's a perfectly cromulent king. So my rooks are on the half open files. I have the two bishops. I have the nice center. And I have a nice knight on e5. And my queen is pinning his f1. So he played knight e3. That's why he played knight f1. I played queen b4. My queen can't get kicked out of b4 so easily. Played f4 attacking my knight. I played knight g6. He played f5 attacking my knight. Then I went back to e5. Now my knight is unassailable. And in this position, the engine says he's better. It doesn't like my queen b4 move. And he took, and it says that's a mistake. It says he should play queen h5 immediately, but he couldn't help himself to take and then play queen h5 check. He couldn't help it. But queen h5 first is better. That actually involves an exchange sacrifice. The engine says white's better here. Knight f3 check wins his rook. And the engine actually prefers white in this position. Queen here check. Queen takes f6. Bishop e7. Queen check. Obviously, queen f6 he could draw if he wanted. Rook takes e1. And white is slightly better according to the computer. Okay, he didn't do that. He played f takes e6. I took back. And he played queen h5 check. And the engine wants me to play knight f7, but my knight's too good on e5. I'm not playing knight f7. That knight's too good. So I play king d8. My king is perfectly cromulent on d8. Thanks, Dork the Cat, for the sub. Hooray. Okay, now in this position, you may notice I have a weak pawn on e6. He's attacking it, and I'm defending it. So he attacked it. Again. Again. How did he attack my e6 pawn? Let me see. <clears throat> I can't really go there. Tonkan is correct. It says this position is equal. All zeros. Let's see. This is when I was a lot younger and I liked a lot these complicated kind of positions. Don't want to draw with black against a low rated player, so you got to mix it up. I don't see a good way to attack it. Okay, he attacked it with queen h3. Oh. And then he attacks it. I was looking at like all the knight moves. Mm -hmm. and I see. Okay, now you see how my king is on d8? Yeah. So you won't guess the move that I played. Oh, snap! The engine says this move is bad. It wants me to play knight to d3 with the idea of pawn takes, queen takes. I'm guessing I didn't see knight to d3. I don't remember seeing that. Okay, I played the craziest move in chess history. d5. Got to open up the center when my king's on d8. And you said it was good or bad? No, the engine doesn't like it. Uh. So the idea is if he takes my pawn, which he did not do, then I take back, I'm threatening his queen, and then I'm threatening d4. Mm -hmm. And the engine says that uh, uh, white, white is better here, like 0.7. Okay, he played a move you probably wouldn't think of. He got off of this diagonal, and he got off of this file. For instance, if he wants to play queen takes h6, mm -hmm. I can play knight f3 check winning the exchange, which in many cases, the engine says white should do. But he didn't like any of that, so he played king h1. Now he can play queen takes h6 at his whim right. and never has to worry about this. Okay, now it says it's equal. I played d4. He played the only move, because his knights are forked. 
So he played bishop takes e6, the only move. And then in this position, I played by far the best move. This is one of the best moves I ever played because nobody would ever play it. I mean, I got three pieces I can take. I can take this, I can take this, and I can take this. The engine says it all loses. Lo everything loses. But the move I played is equal. Well, I have a question about the bishop move. Mm -hmm. So, um, why, I'm not sure why that was the... Oh, I mean, I see the queen's attacked. I see now, okay. I got it now. Mm -hmm. and, then, and it's double, and then you can take their bishop, I guess, or they'll take. But the knights are still threatened. So what move are you suggesting for black? Um, well, I want, and I was trying to get oh. caught up on the white move. Okay. So. Um, black only has one good move here. Let's see. Extra cheese project is banned. Tong Khan is more banned. Seems like you take the knight on c3. No, if I take the knight on c3, then he plays rook a d1. And now I got to be careful. And the problem is uh, he's threatening to take it if I defend it. Oh, I see. My bishop's pinned, so he can take my rook. I can't take his queen because I'm pinned. Yeah. And the engine likes this for white. So you can't open that file up. Right. So I play queen takes b2. Yeah, I was looking at that too. Okay, and what I want to do mm -hmm. isn't necessarily take a pawn, although I do like taking the pawn. It's I want to play rook takes c3 because that pins his knight to his queen. He can't take my rook because I take his queen. Yeah. Okay, the engine says he has one move that doesn't lose. And he didn't play it. He needs to play knight c to d5. And the engine says it's equal. All zeros. Yeah. Okay, then it gives crazy nonsense lines. Does it end in a perpetual for me? Where I play knight here, check, knight here, check. Okay, so he played bishop takes d7. And so the question is, did I play rook takes c3 or knight takes d7? One of them wins and one of them slightly better for white. Wait, what were your two choices? I can take the bishop. Uh -huh. Or I could play rook take c3. Oh, okay. And we're getting into time trouble here. I mean, I would take the knight. Correct. Because you get okay. your rook active. Okay. Now he played the best move, although it says I'm plus three here. But he played the best move. Queen e6. Okay. Now I have one move that wins, and I found it. Notice my rook is hanging. Yeah. Okay. So I ignored that. Played rook takes e3. When I played rook takes e3, I saw the losing line that he played. Because it looks like it's winning. Mm -hmm. And you're going to answer a really hard question soon. All right. Okay, so he checked. Okay. And I took. Yeah. And he and he was really proud when he played this. But we were in time trouble, and I knew this move lost. And he, when he, it looks like it wins. Okay. So he was really happy. Rick E, B, one, and this is the position I showed my student. Oh. Uh, thank somebody. Okay. Well, you, you, you can get it while I'm doing this. Oh, okay. Thanks, Brent Tompkin, for... Some number of subs. Uh, I already think Tom Kong. Oh, this is a different one. You gave five subs. Hey, we're almost at a thousand subs. We have nine hundred ninety-two. Let's see. So you went there. So White's winning here, mm -hmm. except I have a move that wins. I just second. But if I don't play it, he wins. Yeah. This is the position I've shown on the stream before, at least once. And this guy says, if memory serves, it was this move. Let's see, John. I don't know this now.
Let's see. Yeah, probably um, Rook A3. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, that wins. Otherwise, I'm lost. I don't remember saying that. Like and then, that. and then I showed this to my student, the 1900 guy. Yeah. And he said, "Wait a minute! I saw you play Rook A3." And we were like, "Yay!" <laughs> Right, Rook A3. And this idea was actually played recently in a different position, but similar. In some tournament. One of those GM tournaments. Now I win because his Rook's trapped. That'll teach him to play King H1. He should have a safe King like me. See, out in the open. Okay, so he gave me a spite check. I can move my King to either square. I guess if I play King here, I didn't like this check. So I played king c8. If he plays queen g8 check, I play king c7. He's out of checks. What would air supply say? <laughs> You're, I'm all he's out of checks. He's out of checks. <laughs> he, he's so lost without me. I know he was white. Believing I would win. So he checked me. I went here. And then he resigned. Oh, that's a pretty cool game. That game was 29 moves long. When the game ended, he had like five seconds left. There was a lot in 29 moves in that game. There was a lot going on. I used to be good at tactics. I, I saw that way before. I saw that when I played Rook Take C3. I saw that if he did this, I would have Rook A3 at the end. He saw it after I did it. Then he was like, dang. And so forth. I'll wait for donations. We need eight subs to get to a thousand. Who is that against? Dennis Seawald. He's a 2200 player from Michigan. Although this was in 1994. So who knows where he lives now? Who knows if he's alive? Probably. <laughs> 